my friends it's your old pal Jordan the Lion and we are coming to you from Nashville Tennessee we are right in the thick of it today right in the heart of where it all happens today I want to go to a place that has been here for 74 years and they just announced that the building was sold so I don't know if the business is going to continue on or if it's done but we're gonna go look around some Nashville today we're gonna start with Ernest Tubbs record shop days with Jordan the Lion begins right now Yes, hello Nashville. Even on a Sunday, it's pretty happening. And here's Tootsie's. This was a really famous country bar here in Nashville. Hank Williams used to sneak out the back of the Ryman Auditorium, which is on the other side of this. And that was the Grand Old Opry back in those days. He used to sneak out the back door of the Ryman and come over here and drink while he was waiting to go on. This is also where Willie Nelson, when he first came to town looking for work, he was a songwriter. He went in here and met some local songwriters and started talking to them, got them to listen to some of his music, and they helped him get his first paying gigs as a songwriter here in Nashville by actually giving up their bonus. The songwriter had just received a bonus and went in and told his boss, hey, this guy's really good. What if I give up my bonus, you give it to him? and give him a job, and that's what happened. There you got Merle and Willie. Nashville is a town that fosters creativity and is a place where musicians have great respect. So there it is, Ernest Tubbs Record Shop. It has been there for 74 years. There's a really great famous photo of Ernest Tubb and his band, the Texas Troubadours, with their tour bus right out front of here. So the reason I hightailed it to Nashville so quick was that when you're seeing this, a couple days before this, they announced that the record store building was sold, or was going to be sold, and they were going to be closing this down, at least whoever's running it now, and it looks like they might have even closed it early. They said they were going to close in the spring, and I'm here about three days after the announcement. But look at that, this place is amazing. I've been here numerous times, I've shopped here. I just, one of those things I never vlogged because I always thought it would be here because it's always been here. But a lot of history here. A lot of live performances here. In fact, Dolly Parton performed here when she was 12 years old. And they say this is the first place that Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline ever performed together. Now look, sign is not spinning. That's not a good sign. Yeah, I'm pulling on it and it's not opening. I tried calling yesterday and the day before nobody answered. And uh, yeah, I don't know. But there's a great statue of Ernest here. Ernest was a highly, highly respected country musician. He had a famous band called the Texas Troubadours. And like I mentioned, they used to have the a great photo of the band with their tour bus out here. You used to be able to come to the record shop and they had that exact tour bus. He used it from 1970 to 79. He used to have it on display inside the record store. And they have a sign on the door that says no filming inside the store other than the statue up front. But they did have some really great costumes from Ernest when I was in there. A lot of memorabilia. Sad to see this might be gone very soon. I mean, just from looking in the window, look at all the cool stuff in there. The E.T. right there. <laughs> all the Ernest Tubb memorabilia in there. All the famous musicians that would have performed here. A friend of mine actually had a lot of photos from inside here of performances, so he sent them to me and said I was free to use them. I'll show you some of them right here.
They primarily specialized in country, western, bluegrass here, but to tell you how important Ernest Tubb was, Waylon Jennings said in his autobiography, he said when people come up to him and call him a legend, he says, I, I just don't, I don't see myself that way because I'm not a legend. When I hear the word legend, I think of Ernest Tubb. Now that's a legend. It's gonna be so sad if this institution goes away. And also you see up there, it says home of the midnight jamboree. That was going on for 74 years as well. They would have live musicians here and broadcast it. This picture of Ernest and Loretta Lynn up there. Ah, I'm kicking myself now. Like I said, I've been here so many times and just never vlogged it because I always thought, oh, it'll always be here. In fact, there's an article online from a few years ago where the owner of the building was saying, if I have my way, the building's been here 70 years and it'll be here another 70 more. But maybe, I don't know, maybe he passed away. Just always so cool to come here and get to see this marquee up here, this cool spinning sign and everything. I always love this. Just wish they would have given us a little bit more heads up of what day it was closing. And I've shown this before, but just two doors down is Nudie's Honky Tonk, which is awesome because they have some of Nudie's, you know, he was the famous suit maker. They have his car in here and some of his clothes. There it is, look at that up there. And a live band. Mickey Rooney's nudie shirt. Hank Williams. Merle Travis. That is, that one looks like Chris Hillman's almost from Flying Greedo Brothers, but it's not. It's Skull Shulman. Look at the you pants and everything. And then there's a picture of Nudie, and that's Merle Travis's suit. Now if you go to Buck Owens restaurant in Bakersfield, he has that same car. There were two of them. two of these made. There's a replica of it, the nudie made, and they have that one on display. Famous for making it for Elvis. But after Elvis used it, he famously, well, Colonel gave it back to nudie. Like I said, I know that there were, the original of this is actually in Graceland on display. And all the classic country posters, those are great. A lot of Grand Ole Opry stuff. Because it's basically across the street, or it was. Roy Aka. Oh, they got some cool new merch. I want to buy some. Look at this stuff. This is new. They didn't have that one before. I gotta get one. Oh, look at that. They have little Jimmy Dickens suit up there. That's great. That's a little one. <laughs> I'm a little hungry and I haven't had anything to eat yet today, so let's go to the Johnny Cash Diner. If you like Jason Aldean, he has a bar here too. We're heading over here. You gotta look for the Johnny Cash Museum sign, which is right there. And then it's around the corner. And they also have a Sun Diner here too, Sun Records. Looks like there's a bit of a line though. There's the Cash Museum. Looking for it right over here. Yep, this is our place. Where are they now? Let's check out their menu here. Biscuits and gravy. All right, sounds good to me. Cowboy brunch, huh? Live band here too. Oh, this is great. Look at the wall and the eatery. say they're quick here by the time I sat down placed my order they probably had my food out to me in three minutes and it's good couldn't come to Nashville and not have a southern meal that was perfect Ooh. that's a big boot baby 
So is that one. At a historic 60s Woolworth, they're doing, they're restoring it. Whiskey Row. This place is pure chaos. Look at that awesome neon sign, though. Actually, there's a lot of great ones down here. Jack's Barbecue. Gotta put the Legends Corner mural up here. Everybody sees that when they come through here. The nights are just insane. You're taking your own life in your hand if you come here at night. Alan Jackson, Reba. I didn't know this, I just uh, heard in Waylon's book that when Reba's band died in an accident, she called him to for solace because of him, you know, giving up his seat to the big bopper in the Buddy Holly crash. And he said, Reba, you aren't God. You couldn't have stopped it, nor could you have made it happen so you don't have to live with that kind of regret after kind of deal with it with Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson. Can't believe they didn't put Waylon on here. Charlie. Look at that. Here's the historic Ryman, former home of the Grand Ole Opry. We vlogged that before. And there's the alley entrance Hank used to go in back door from the Ryman I told you about, Hank Sr. And I also noticed when I came down here last night, they put some of the statues back up outside the Ryman. Let me show you. So the first time I came here, I thought they had a Bill Monroe statue, father of the bluegrass. Then the second time it came, he wasn't here. Well, you can see where the holes in the ground, where he used to be here. And apparently they removed him when a lot of the riots and things were happening, protests, they just wanted to be safe. And then check this out, Loretta Lynn. I'm not sure I ever saw that one before. It was new to me. So from the corner of the Ryman, we're gonna work our way up this street and that's where the Woolworth was and is. So right there is the historic sit-in, Nashville sit-in Woolworths to help end segregation from February till May of 1960 they would have sit-ins here. So on this sign they tell the story on February 13th, February 1960, 124 students from Nashville's historically black colleges and universities walked into Woolworths, Cress and McClellan sat down at the lunch counters and asked to be served to no avail. Students also targeted Walgreens, W.T. Grant, as well as Harvey's and Kane Sloan department stores. This, their goal was to desegregate Nashville lunch counters. The student protesters experienced no violence until February 27th. On that day at Woolworths and McClellan's, white registers threw the students from their seats, punched, kicked, and spat upon them. Nashville police only arrested the student protesters. 81 students were arrested and charged with loitering and disorderly conduct. Two days later, the court fined each student $50. They took a principal stand, refused to pay the bail, and spent 33 and a third days in jail. So it's continued on the other side. It says, due to the 19th of April bombing of Eternity Z. Alexander Luby's home, a diverse crowd of approximately 3,000 to 4,000 people silently marched from Tennessee AI State University to the courthouse, where Mayor Ben West met them at the steps after an intense dialogue between Mayor West and student leader, the Reverend C.T. Vivian. Diane Nash stepped forward and asked the mayor if he recommended that lunch counters be desegregated. The mayor agreed, and the next morning, the Nashville Tennessean read, integrate counters, says mayor. On May 10, 1960, Nashville became the first major city to begin desegregating its public facilities when six 
downtown stores led by Harvey's and Kane Sloan opened their lunch counters to African Americans. The Nashville student protest movement desegregate all public facilities did not end until 1964. So as I understand it, they're doing some construction here and working on restoring it, but they have part of the lunch counter right here on display, and that was not always the case. And you can see some protest signs from right out front of here. You can see that war sign that we just started in front of. All right, now I wanna show you one other thing. That's interesting. We're gonna go back over to, it's basically across from the Country Music Hall of Fame. It's a pretty awesome mural I just ran into. Tucked away back here, I saw it off to the side. Oh, that's cool. Passing by the Ryman again. Look at those awesome stained glass windows. So I was just passing by Ernest Tubb again and noticed that there was someone inside. And they have a sign that says we're open from 12 to 2. So I think the reason I didn't vlog this before is because they had a sign on the door that said no photos or video inside, but I'm gonna go in and look around. I didn't notice all the little roses that they had in the store. That's kind of cool. So yeah, they're pretty uh, pretty adamant about no photos or anything in here other than just the, the statue. They have a lot of cool stuff, so come see it before they're gone. And apparently a lot of people have been trying to make money off it by selling stuff online, so they're not letting, that's why they're not letting photos and stuff in here other than of Ernest. And same with t-shirts, you can only, they have a limit of one shirt per customer. That's so cool. They even did his custom guitar strap. So what they told me is the building is officially for sale and they don't know when they're gonna move out, but they are not letting people buy hardly, you know, as far as merchandise goes, one of anything because people are already selling it on eBay and they don't want that. That will probably be the last shopping I get to do there, I would guess. So this is the last thing I wanted to look at today with you guys. I said it was across from the Country Music Hall of Fame. That is there. Check out this amazing Walk of Fame they have here. Amy Grant, Marta Ingram. Stax Legend. Garth Brooks, Trisha Yearwood, Kings of Leon, that was kind of surprising. Loretta Lynn, oh, Jack White, Long Stripes, Les Paul. Oh, there's Dottie Rambo and Manuel. He was a protege to Nudie, made a lot of the suits. There's little Jimmy and Tootsie. She owned Tootsie's Orchid Lounge, that purple building we saw. Charlie Daniels. Ernest Tubb. There's Dolly. And Captain Ryman, who started the Ryman Auditorium. One of the most important names in Nashville history, not only as a performer, but as a record producer. Little Richard. Elvis, of course, gotta have Elvis. Hank Williams Sr., right next to Jimi Hendrix. I dig that. And 
Vince Gill over here next to Buddy Holly's band, the Crickets. And over here you got Roy Orbison. All right, my friends, we're going to call it a day. I hope you enjoyed our wandering through Nashville today. If you never knew about Ernest Hub Record Shop, 74 years, still going for now. But uh, if you're near Nashville, come check it out while you can. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye. <laughs>